Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 184 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is one of the most mysterious fish that we've talked about on this channel, but really captured the internet by storm through one picture for a while there and then seemed everyone just seemed to forget about it. Um, so basically, I'm bringing this fish back while watching a toddler that's getting into stuff that she shouldn't. Thank you. <laughs> it's a lion. Um, today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The frill, frilled shark. Now the uh, frilled shark, or scientific name, Chlamydosalacus. Whoa. Chlamydosalacus anguineus. Again, that's Chlamydosalacus anguineus. It is part of the family Chlamydosalacidae, which is a very small family. There's only two species in this family that are living today. There's the frilled shark and then the South African thr frilled shark, which was actually um, only described, I believe, in late 1990s, uh, maybe the late eight, 1980s. Until that point, um, scientists just assumed that it was only one species um it's found throughout the atlantic and pacific oceans um really found on the outer continental shelves and on the continental slopes um you know it's you're not really going to see this too often just swimming around um now this is considered a deep water shark and I'm going to put that in quotation marks. Um, and there, there's a reason for this. I found two ranges. One source said that they are found 200 to 1500 meters, which is 650 to 4900 feet. And another source that they are said that they are most common between 50 and 200 meters, which is 160 to 660 feet. Which essentially means they're just found in the water. Um, it's really unclear. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a really mysterious shark that we don't have a extreme amount of information on. But you'd think we'd have a little bit more than that. Um, it has been caught to a depth of... It has been caught at a depth of 1,570 meters, which is 5,150 feet. But that same source said that they're usually not occurring deeper than 1,000 meters, 3,300 3, feet. So when I look and I see that much disparaging between numbers, my mind immediately goes to this is a deep water species that moves up and down in the water column and we'll get into why that is in just a little bit um, but this this species is more probably associated with dark waters um, where sunlight is not necessarily penetrating so let's go in there now this is a smaller shark than people think and a lot of people would think you know this um, and don't get me wrong, I will show the picture. In fact, why don't I do that? The picture that kind of took the internet by storm um, was this. This picture took the internet by storm and people were crazy about it. And someone is really excited that Bluey is on right now. Just crazy excited. Um, that is an incredible picture, but it really gives a misconception as to size and things like that. Um, it's a smaller shark than you think. You can see here the scale. Um, this is 20 centimeters. Um, so this entire thing is probably about 150 centimeters. Um, maybe around two and a half feet or so. And the max recorded male length is 1.7 meters which is 5.6 feet the max recorded female length is 2 meters which is 6.6 .6 feet when people saw this picture they were thinking of massive um, massive sizes and things like that but it's actually significantly smaller um, 
than you might think when you think of underwater monster. Now it does have this eel-like body. This is considered a living fossil. There are fossil records of this fish and it has basically remained unchanged for a very long time. Um, but this eel-like body is pretty indicative. In fact, that's where it's got its specific, the specific epithet of its name. Anguinius is uh, the root word of anguilla. Not Anguilla is the root word of that, which means eel-like. Um, and it's this gray to dark brown there's not really coloration to this fish and that's not that would be expected in fish living in the very deep ocean just not a whole lot of color gray or dark brown has these small rounded slightly pointed pectoral fins they're kind of rounded off they're not i wouldn't call it pointed but i wouldn't call them exactly rounded um it's got this very short rounded dorsal fin set so far back in the body these really sort of frilled and um long or larger pelvic fins in the bottom part of the caudal fin right here really large um and it's obviously it's kind of got that natural heterocircle tail like a lot of fish it's really a large very long caudal fin now it has this broad and flattened head. Um, you can tell that on both of these pictures. It's really broad and flattened and you can see here really wide. Um, but there's a reason why this one looks so wide. Um, and that head is filled with many, many, many teeth. You can see right here. They're actually kind of spaced out. Um, there's usually between 18 to 28 so, yes, 18 to 28 tooth rows in the upper jaw. Sorry, I had to look at my notes. And the bottom jaw has around 20 to 29 rows of teeth. And it usually totals up to around 300 teeth. But what's interesting about these teeth is if you look at them, they're actually trident shape. They have this main cusp in the middle with two little cusplets on the side. Um, that's not necessarily that unheard of but i can't really think of many sharks that have this sort of configuration of teeth it's a truly bizarre bizarre teeth structure um and what's interesting as well is these jaws you can tell they hinge very far back their jaw actually opens up extremely wide but yes a lion it's a lion um uh, at the throat, there's actually uh, six rows of gill slits right here. But the one closest to the head, you can see right here, and you can kind of see right here. It's a little more prevalent here. The gill slit actually goes all the way around that forms sort of a collar. And there's a, the gill filaments actually extend a little bit past that... Um, gill that gill sort of covering and that's what's actually creating this um sort of frill structure um you can see it a little pr pretty good right there um but that frill that's where it gets its name it's got that frill so think of like the little frills or doilies that um people used to wear in olden times that you know you basically like a little thing that you want over your shoulders that's how this shark actually got its name I feel like it could have gotten a better name than frilled shark um you know trident tooth or something i don't know it's a really neat shark that kind of got a odd name um but now for what we're gonna talking about eating the um sh this shark primarily eats squids but it does eat smaller sharks and some bony fish. But what happens for a lot of smaller bony fish and squid is they uh, go through a dial migration pattern. Meaning during the day, these things go farther down in the water column and they're sitting there in that dark water. And at night, they actually get closer to the surface. And that's why I think this shark actually exhibits that. It's just following the food sources it's not necessarily that it's hanging out there 
it is, I think it's primarily following the food up in there, and that may be why you're catching uh, or seeing some of those at a little bit shallower depths. Um, so that's why I think it's more than likely exhibiting that dial migration pattern. Now, some the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on, and it a couple of parts actually. The first thing that I read is there's no reproduction seasoning due to the depths because the bottom of the ocean has no seasons. And that was something that clicked in my brain that I was like, how did I never think of that? Of course they don't have reproductive seasons because they don't have seasons in the bottom of the ocean. It was the most bizarre fact that I was like, how come I never thought of that? So that's kind of the interesting first interesting fact. Um, but and the second interesting fact is related to the second one. This is an ovoviparous species, meaning it lays eggs internally, and the eggs hatch, and then it gives life birth. That's not unheard. We've talked about it on that channel, this channel, numerous, numerous times. But the interesting fact that I found was this. During pregnancy, the embryo's average rate of growth is 1.4 centimeters, which is half an inch, per month until birth. They don't give birth until the shark's pups are somewhere between 40 and 60 centimeters long, which is 16 inches to 24 inches. Number one, that's a very, very large pup. Number two... At birth, the litter comprises of somewhere between 2 to 15 pups, with an average litter comprising of 6 pups. Now keep in mind, the max recorded female length is 6.6 .6 feet. So, let's say 6 pups all around a foot and a half. The level of stretch that the female's organs have to reach to match that just is really bizarre to me absolutely bizarre but now for the real interesting fact is when you think about think about what I said 1.4 centimeters per month and how big are they when they're born 40 to 60 centimeters that means that the frilled sharks gestation period can be as long as three and a half years <coughs> Three and a half years. That is what really got me. Three and a half years gestation period with an average litter of six pups. This fish, in my opinion, could very quickly go become endangered and possibly extinct, extinct with very, very minimum effort. Now, these sharks are not really com caught commercially. They're only caught as bycatch. But it's still bizarre. Every female you remove means that you remove quite a bit of the population or the potential of the population. But thank you guys so much for the, uh, hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't... Oh, my goodness. I need to redo my sign-off. Thank you go so guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. If you'd like to support the channel, please click the link down below. It is by no means expected, but very much appreciated. Regardless, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, and peace.